Hi everybody, this is Eugene O'Loughlin, Lecturer in Computing at the National College of Ireland and welcome to my series of short how-to videos. In this video, we're going to learn how to calculate students' t-statistic for independent samples or unpaired samples in Excel 2010. So before we start, let's look at the formula we use for unpaired or independent t-test samples. We can see it looks like it's quite a mouthful over here on the right hand side. Our t value is equal to all of these other uh, individual values uh, that we need to calculate. But when we look through these values, we can see that they're relatively straightforward. x bar 1 is the mean for sample group 1, x bar 2 is the mean for sample group 2, mu 1 is the mean for population 1, and mu 2 is the mean for population uh, of group 2. So that's fairly straightforward. We need to be able to calculate those mean values. Now the denominator underneath, we take the square root of um, s squared, well that's the variance of group 1, s squared 2 is the variance of group 2, and finally n1 is the number of participants in group 1, and n2 is the number of participants in group 2. So if we calculate each of these individual values, we can plug them into the formula to get our value of t. Now over here on the left hand side, I've got two samples, okay? Uh, there's differences between these two groups, group A and group B, is what our focus is, what's being explored here. The, uh, th these could be, say, test results or something like that, and there be people are only being tested once. Each group is only tested once, and there are two groups. That means that the appropriate test statistic is the t-test for independent or unpaired means. As always, I set out my hypothesis, my null hypothesis, and my alternate hypothesis. So in column F here, in the brown box, I've got my HO, my null hypothesis. And as always with t-tests, my null hypothesis is that there's no difference between the group population. So mu for group A, that's the population of group A, uh, is the same as the mu, the population mean for group B. And my alternate hypothesis is simply that the sample mean for group A is not the same as the sample mean for group B. And we're going to test this with an alpha, alpha value of 0.05, 95% confidence interval. So our, our data over here and our formula and our null hypothesis were ready to go to, to calculate the values for the t-test. So I can see in my formula that I need to calculate the mean uh, of the variance and the number of each sample. So let's do that first. So in, in uh, cell B15 here, I want to calculate the mean or the average for group A. So I'm going to use Excel's average function for that. So I'm going to just say equals average, opening bracket, and with my mouse, select all the values in column B under group A. Closing bracket and press enter. I now need to calculate the variance for each of these. So um, I'm going to just use again Excel's uh, var.s uh, variance formula for uh, sample variance and opening bracket and select all my data in, in the under group A, closing bracket and press enter. And finally for group A I need to calculate the uh, number of participants in group A, so uh, or group 1, and so I'm going to use Excel's count function for that equals C-O-U-N-T count and again select all the values with my mouse uh, under group A here, closing bracket and press enter. And I need to do the same for group B, but I'm just going to use, to speed this up, I'm going to use Excel's autofill tool to copy those three formulas and do the same for group B. So now I've got the um, all the values that I need to plug into my formula over here on the right-hand side. So let's build this formula up step by step. First of all, here in cell G9, I need to calculate the difference between the means. You can see in the formula, I need to calculate x bar 1 minus x bar 2. So that's very, very straightforward. I'm just going to do equals click on the mean uh, in, in cell B15 minus the mean in cell C15 and that's going to give me the difference between the means. Now mu1 and mu2 are the population means and then actually in this particular instance we actually don't know what they are but our null hypothesis is assuming that they are the same so a mu1 minus mu2 would therefore have a value of zero so we can leave that bank but just for illustration purposes I'm going to put in zero here and in fact in some versions of this formula on the right hand side you will see mu1 minus mu2 uh, left out altogether. My next calculation is so that's my numerator at the top already done. Now I need to calculate step by step the bits in underneath the denominator under the line. First part here is to calculate the uh, variance and divide it by n1. So I'm going to do that for sample 1. So this is equal to, I've got my variance for sample uh, 1 over here calculated already, divided by n1, which is a value of 13 here in cell B17, and press enter. I also want to do the same for uh, the second sample, groups, group B. So type in equals here, select the variance, 40.67, already calculated divided by the number in group B and press enter. 
So I've now got the elements of the uh, what's inside the brackets here in the denominator calculated. I've now got to add the last two calculations together. So that's fairly straightforward. Uh, type in equals uh, the value here 2.825 plus the value here 4.067 and press enter. That almost done for the denominator. I've now got to get the square root of that. So use the Excel's SQRT formula and click on the cell, which is just above 6.89 is the value you want to get the square root of. Closing bracket and press enter. So 2.625 represents uh, the, all of the values in on the denominator and underneath the line. We've got 12.96 here at the top, which gives us our denominator. All we've got to do now is divide one by the other. So I'm just going to type in equals. Uh, x1 minus uh, x bar 2 and divide that by the value that we've just calculated in the cell above here and press enter. And we get a value of 4.9485. So that's our t value. Now bef before we use that to determine if this is, uh, represents a significant difference between these two samples or not, we need to calculate the degrees of freedom. And in tests like this for uh, unpaired or independent t-tests, our degrees of freedom are the number uh, of participants in uh, N1 uh, plus the number of participants in group 2, which is N2. And then because there's two groups, we take away uh, 2. So N1 plus N2 minus 2. So I'm just going to type in, I'm going to use uh, formulas here, equals um, N1, that's the value in uh, cell B17 plus N2, which is the value in cell B17, uh, minus the number 2, press enter. So we've got 21 degrees of freedom and a T value of 4.9485. Another window here, I've got um, uh, T tables. Uh, this T table is taken from Wikipedia, showing students' T distribution. And we need to know two things here. First of all, we need down along the left-hand side to know our number of degrees of freedom. So we know that that's 21 from our calculation. So somewhere on the t-table over here, my critical value uh, will be on, along this line. Now, our alternate hypothesis is that the uh, group uh, sample mean of A is uh, not equal to the group sample B of mean. So that means it's a two-tailed or two-sided test. Our alpha value is 0 0.05, so therefore we need to go to the 95% column up here at the top for the two-sided or two-tailed uh, two-tailed test. So the column here where it bisects um, the uh, 21 degrees of freedom gives us a value of 2.080. So 2.80 is our critical value and we go back then to our calculation we can see that our t value of 4.948 is greater than the critical value so therefore it falls into the reject region uh, on our t distribution so therefore we reject the null hypothesis that the uh, means are the same in favor of the alternate hypothesis that the means are not the same at the 95 percent or alpha equal to 0 0.05 level so that's how you calculate a t-statistic manually in um, Excel. I hope you found this video useful. Thank you for your attention.